Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Welcome once again to Cut the Tape. I'm Rick Alvarez. Thank you for joining me tonight. Well, last week we opened some movie stuff. Was it last week? I don't know. Everything just seems to be melding together. Oh! Yeah, we did open movie stuff. We also opened this guy. I should probably put him in his display case now. I'll do that. But I was thinking movie stuff, and we did, uh, what did we do? We did Bumblebee stuff, right? Uh, we did some studio series stuff. But I was thinking, I had something from a previous film, which I've been meaning to open. And it's a pretty big item. So, it's this guy. Uh, Dragonstorm. This is Transformers Dragonstorm. Activate Cyberfire. He's a turbocharger. Uh, this is my second one. I have another one uh, up there on the shelf. And this guy, I remember getting on clearance. I got him for $24.98 on clearance. And I think they even went cheaper than that. And I saw a whole bunch. I'm like, uh, I should have gotten them just to give them away. Anyway, I'm going to open him up. And then I've got a little uh, slingshot here, or crosshairs. I keep calling him a slingshot. It's crosshairs. Yeah, this one was also on clearance too. You see, I tried to take the sticker off, but I, all right, you caught me. I paid three fifty for this. Uh, this was a Walmart one. This was a Target. I think this might have been a Target exclusive. Anyway, let's open him up and see what he's all about. Yeah. Woo! So I'm not quite sure where the dragon storm character came from i know that for age of extinction we pitched the dinobots and we pitched the dinobots combining into a larger robot uh we never once talked about king arthur for last night or round table or anything like that um so i, I don't know if some of those ideas carried forward like squeak did squeak was something that we pitched for age of extinction not quite in the form that it came out. Well, let's just talk about Squeak real quick. All right, so we pitched Age of Extinction and a character, he didn't have a name at the time, he was a motorcycle. But the way we had pitched it was he was a motorcycle that was built by a human and he could transform. So by the end of the film, this human built transformer kind of saves the day and, and does something so heroic that Optimus Prime grants him a piece of a spark or, or a spark or however it was supposed to happen. He, he basically says, you've proven yourself worthy. You are one of us. And he makes him an Autobot. And then the, the guy has the Autobot symbol on him. Uh, we, were, we were toying around that the kid would be Kicker. We knew that name would never fly, but in our heads, we were like, oh, what, what, you know, what if the kid who builds him, his name is Kicker? We were just toying around. We, we knew it would never get into the film. Uh, but that's kind of where Squeaks came from. So they took that idea, carried it forward, switched it around. That he, I, I'm not sure Squeaks has an origin in the last night. I think he's just kind of there. And, and the girl, uh, Dora, the explorer, just kind of fixes him. Um, but Dragonstorm, Turbocharger. All right, Turbochargers are figures that are supposed to do a quick transformation, like a kind of like a one-step thing, like an action feature that it just springs to life. This, of course, was the largest Turbocharger made. Um, I don't know if the Grimlock from. Robots in Disguise was technically a turbocharger. 
You get a pretty simple transformation. I don't think they called him a turbocharger. Now, I do want to point something out that's cool about this box. See that? This is like he breathed dragon fire and he melted this part of the box. Like, that's, that's a neat little detail that I like. It's really only there to make the box look bigger, to see, to give a perception of added value. Little tricks like that are all over the place. Take a look at packaging, any packaging, not just transformers, any packaging. And you'll notice that they pad it. something that's not typically done in Japanese markets. Their boxes are all, they're not uniform like the US where it's the same size. Uh, their, their box fits the character. So they could all be all different price points too. All right, so this is proving just to be a little challenging to take out of the box. Cause he's got this flap folded here. That's, that's why I buy two. One to keep sealed, one to open. These open boxes, they're, they're also there because the kid touches it. And if the kid can touch it, it's creating the idea in the kid that he wants it, that he wants to play with it. Especially if you have a feature here, like this handle here. All right, we got a bunch of twist ties on here. Just gonna, just gonna cut them. We can chat about other stuff while I cut this. So for example, we used to do a show called Oof My Wallet where we talk about things that were particularly expensive. Well, stuff that we spent money on that hurt our wallet. The show's on hiatus, but I really wish we'd bring it back because I had a major Oof My Wallet. I bought a store. Yeah, I bought a store. So in September, I'll be opening up my own frame and picture shop and pop culture art gallery. Uh, the store existed for many, many years. The owner is retiring and I'm buying it off of her. And uh, I'm gonna carry on the tradition of doing everything by hand. Something that, uh, it's a lost art. It's a lost art. All right, so instantly we lost we lost an arm here. Of course, figures are built nowadays so that you know if you pop an arm off, it can for the most part pop back on. And there we go. Boom. It's on there. All right, so still in the packaging, we've got the tail and the two wings. I'm just going to cut them out, free them from their cardboard prison. Yeah, so I'm going to be Rick Alvarez, frame artiste. I want to be the guy to go to for all your framing needs, especially for pop culture stuff like comic books, comic art, Pokemon cards, magic cards. There really isn't anyone known in our industry for being the person to go to for that stuff. Packaging art, I've got a whole bunch of it framed. That's how I met the lady who owns the store. All right. So we've assembled it, pretty simple to assemble. It's pretty big. I mean, here's a, a Legends figure, right? That's pretty big. This, this, is, this is to scale, I would say. All right, we've got a couple plastic ties on here, snip, snip. You know, another thing I don't like about the open box is that they get dusty. So we've got an on, off, and a try me button. Let's hit the try me. Batteries are dead. Batteries are dead. 
All right, let's try transforming this guy. So, Dragon Storm's coming in. He's gonna he's gonna save the day. Oh, there he is. Let's do that again. Oh, I'm ripe, Sully. Hey. Hey, it's Dragon Storm. Hey, everybody, Dragon Storm's here. So, where is that giant box that he came in? I guess these do come down. There seems to be some kind of jaw opening feature here. Rah! Rah! Batteries work. I recognize that voice. That's a certain designer I know. I know that voice. Uh, one of my first uh, fun experiences at Hasbro, I think this was my first or second week I was there. I think it was my first week. We were recording the voice for that um, giant bumblebee that came out. Came out for the first movie and then they retold it for the... I think it was called Ultimate Bumblebee. It was just ginormous. And then they retold it for Revenge of the Fallen. So a bunch of us went into the booth, recording booth, on a Friday morning, recorded all the lines, and then they would switch between my voice and someone else's voice and someone else's voice and someone else's voice to, to give that cracking radio sound. Like, if we all record the same lines and we can switch kind of seamlessly between someone's voice and my voice and someone else's voice... And there's a there's a special code. I think uh, forget how you do it. You got to put it in vehicle mode and then press the buttons in a certain way, and it plays the G1 theme song. True. All right. I feel like you know I I never really quite got the accents why they existed in the movies, but. I kind of feel like he should have an accent. That's right, Optimus. I'm going to attack the Decepticons. We're going to beat them down for you. I kind of feel like he sounds like that. Woohoo! All right, let's just open a Legends figure. I've, I've never opened a Legends figure from Age of Extinction. I, ha I have them all just sitting there. There, there's... Little instructions with it. Twist ties, or not twist ties, but plastic bands. This is my first time actually playing with this toy, and, and so is this one. Crosshairs, who I keep calling Slingshot, who I pitched as Smokescreen. Smokescreen. Let's uh, put him right there. Hey. I kind of feel that that skill's right. Let's transform this dude. Oh, there goes that arm again. You see, it's it's not because I I wanted to leave these toys there unopened it's it's just because they they didn't they're they're not designed for for a kid my age and there's there's nothing wrong with that it's great that this this is a fun toy for for a kid here he is riding on the dragon let's 
just want to transform this dude real quick just to see how it goes. That's pretty intricate. Not pretty intricate, but it's a lot of parts for a Legends figures. That's what I want to say. It's a lot of parts for Legends figures. It's a Corvette. Dude should have been called Trax. They could have kept the design the same. Hell, even keep the color the same. Dude should have been Trax. There he is. Yeah! Woo! I'm Dragon Storm and my wing just fell off. Oh, Scrooge McDuck, David Tennant. That's who would do the voice for him. Yeah. And just for shits and giggles. This guy's riding him too. With with the handle of the back. Alright. Uh any questions? No? Okay. Well, I mean we'll call it a early day then. We did fifteen minutes instead of twenty-five. Yeah, I'm good with that. Good. Good. Hey, remember, wash your hands, wear a mask, be kind to your fellow humans, and always find time to cut the tape. Otherwise, you get a big, huge stockpile and you got to do a bad internet show to motivate you to open stuff. Okay, we'll see you next week.